The Life and Death of T.B. Joshua, The True Story. Prophet T.B. Joshua was different things to different people. While some people referred to him even before his demise as an agent of Satan, a magician, or an occult healer, many saw him as a God sent, the present day redeemer, and true man of God. Was he an ambassador of Satan or of God? T.B. Joshua, or simply T.B.J., was born in Osin neighborhood, Arigidi Akoko, Northwest Local Government Area in Odo State of Nigeria, on 12 June 1963, after staying in his mother's womb for about 15 months, six months longer than normal. His hometown is about 260 miles or 400 kilometers from Lagos. The charming, influential, and controversial Nigerian pastor, prophet, and televangelist Timmy Tokwe Balogu Joshua, simply called TB Joshua, reportedly passed away between 5 and 6 June 2021, shortly after conducting a live broadcast. He was aged 57. The founder of Synagogue Church of All Nations, Scorn, would have been 58 years old exactly a week before his death, that is, on 12 June 2021. T.B. Joshua's or T.B.J.'s parents were Yoruba from the western part of Nigeria, and his name was said to be simply Balogu Francis at birth and early life. TBJ's father was Pakola Ole Balogu, an educated man who worked as a Yoruba English translator for the British in Nigeria. The name Balogu could probably have been TBJ's surname. A noteworthy event occurred a few days before his naming, which took place on the eighth day, as TBJ narrowly evaded death after a huge rock from a quarry explosion near his parents' house crashed through the roof and landed a few inches away from where he was laid, missing him by mere inches. This incident led to his parents naming him Temitokwe, a Yoruba name translating to mine is worthy of thanks. He attended St. Stephen's Anglican Primary School in Arigidi Akoko from 1971 to 1977 before proceeding to secondary school. No sooner had he commenced secondary school education than he dropped out due to financial hardship caused by his father's death. He then opted for evening school combined with casual jobs and teaching of Bible lessons. TBJ claimed that he would have been in the Nigerian army if he was not a clergyman, but his attempt at this was foiled due to a train breakdown on the day he would have enlisted. In one of his books, he claimed to have scored 99% consistently in Bible studies while performing woefully in other subjects which had been affected due to his concentration on the Holy Bible. TBJ lived a normal life with his parents in his formative years. His father died just before he left primary school. TBJ had to be handed over to his uncle on his mother's side due to the financial hardship mainly caused by his father's death. The uncle was a strict Muslim. TBJ's uncle enrolled him in a strict Muslim secondary school where he was no longer allowed to study his Bible. He had to hide 
to read the literal code from the Bible. Because of this, he left the secondary school so as not to get caught. T.B. relocated to Lagos and found a job as a poultry attendant, a job that entailed the picking of poultry droppings for use as manure. He was the only Nigerian there, while the other workers were Ghanaians. He said it was a very dirty job and it used to smell very badly. He did it for about a, about a year. With a little savings from the poultry job, TBJ went back to school. He recalled in his book that one day, a madman known to the students and teachers entered their classroom. The students and teacher fled the classroom, leaving him and the madman, who was also known to be violent. He said he prayed for the madman, who became calm and responsive. TBJ was nicknamed Small Pastor since then by his schoolmates. He was also said to encourage his schoolfellows to pray for healing while they had such minor ailments as headache and so on instead of using painkillers. And I quote, This is where the awareness of God's presence on me started, he said. TBJ once attended the Celestial Church of Christ, a white garment Pentecostal Christian denomination where he was either to an unknown prophet. It was from there that he saw a vision from God to proceed on a 40-day fast as his mission in the world was mega than staying within the Celestial Church fold. It was already fast that he got a revelation to set up a ministry. I had been informed through reliable sources that TBJ had always had the spiritual power in him. This became amplified after he finished his 40-day fast in preparation for setting up SCORN, that is the Synagogue Church of All Nations. It was also reliably gathered that TBJ spent some time in Kaduna, in Kaduna state of Nigeria, where he was a member of the Celestial Church of Christ, Kaduna. He was also a member of this vineyard in Lagos. Squand started in 1987 under the link bridge between Ejibo and Ebe in Lagos State with about eight members. It moved to its uh, present and permanent headquarters at number one, Shegun Irifi Street, Ikotwebe, Lagos, Nigeria, after using three different locations before this. Prophet TB Joshua works alongside the members to rebuild a wall that had been destroyed by the storm. His church has since become a mecca for people from all over the world and all walks of life, including the high and mighty in search of healing, miracle, and turnaround in Lagos, Nigeria's most popular city, where the headquarters of the church is. Prominent personalities, including celebrities, politicians, and football stars, amongst others, found one form of circle or another after visiting the late prophet. TBJ regularly toured all the continents and was very popular in Africa, Asia, and South America. He was once pronounced one of Nigeria's most controversial clergymen 
by Forbes and also ran the Christian television station Emmanuel TV. In December of 2014, his church became a center of an investigation after a section of his headquarters, a six-story guest house collapsed with 116 people dead, including many foreigners, especially South Africans, and many injured. An inquiry allegedly discovered that extra floors had been added to the building without planning permission. A Karuna report stated that, and I quote, the charge was culpable because of criminal negligence, unquote. Squan is one of the world's largest virtual Christian broadcast congregations. He was probably the world's most viewed Christian ministry on television. His church had one of the most subscribed YouTube channels worldwide. Not long before his death, YouTube suspended the church's account due to allegations of hate speech after videos emerged showing the preacher conducting prayers to cure gay people. It had nearly 2 million subscribers and 600 million views. Facebook also has about 6 million followers. Although the cause of his death has not been made public, it was gathered that TBJ could likely have suffered a mild stroke some weeks before his death, which he came out of. A former member of TBJ's church has also claimed in a video that TBJ had been on medication for an undisclosed ailment for about two years. While many people have taken to the social media and other channels to leave such condolence messages as, I quote, God has taken his servant. Another one, TB Joshua was someone who actually touched the lives of many poor people. And one other one, TB Joshua is dead? Tell me it's a lie. Unquote. Some people have said negative things about him as well. Prominent amongst them, pastors Jackson Senyonga and Chris Okote in Uganda and Nigeria, respectively. TBJ's last public appearance was on Saturday, 5 June 2021, during the Emmanuel TV Partners meeting, where he spoke sentences like, and I quote, time for everything, unquote, and another quote, watch and pray, unquote, and also another one, one life for Christ is all we have, unquote. These were said to be his last words before living for the life beyond. Coincidentally, TBJ was born on one of Nigeria's most important dates, June 12, tagged Democracy Day, which is a public holiday in Nigeria. TBJ was killed in shepherding flocks, televangelism, and philanthropy, if that is also his skill. He was an unapologetic and an unrepentant lover of God. He nurtured turn from its teething problems to a force to reckon with among religious organizations the world over. Prophet T.B. Joshua is carrying a plank of wood to assist in rebuilding the church. Prophet T.B. Joshua is packing sand along with members of the church to repair the damage that was caused to the first church structure due to the increasing number of worshippers attending the church. The Holy Spirit instructed Prophet T.B. Joshua to move to a new location. In 1994, the church moved to Ikotunegbe, Lagos, Nigeria. This is the fourth building of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. After the service, the man of God returns by motorcycle to his personal place of sanctuary.
his own prayer mountain, located 15 minutes from the church. Here is Prophet T.B. Joshua at the age of 32. He was the overseer of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, while at the same time cleaning the toilets of the church every day for three years. One may ask the question, why did Prophet T.B. Joshua keep such a detailed record right from the beginning of the life he lived? He is a man of vision, and his vision was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Emmanuel TV, changing lives, changing nations, and changing the world. Squan has helped boost the economy locally and in Nigeria as a whole by TBJ's popularity, which have resulted in an enormous boost for local businesses, especially in the hospitality industry. It constantly helped Nigeria derive foreign revenue due to the influx of worshippers year in and year out. The church is practically, and I quote, Nigeria's biggest tourist attraction. His giving ability was legendary and not limited to Nigeria. He got involved in extensive humanitarian projects worldwide. He regularly paid tuition fees up to university level for countless number of people at home and overseas. Sometime in 2012, it was reported that TBJ sponsored the PhD program of a Nigerian student in Oxford University in the UK with the maintenance and full fee estimated at about £100,000 while he also sponsored another student from Botswana at the prestigious Harvard University in the United States of America. Following the deportation of several Nigerians from Libya and other countries, TBJ stepped in to rehabilitate them as most of them were deported without being allowed to take their belongings, that is, if they had any. The traditional ruler of his hometown, Obayisa Olani Pekun said his greatest regret was that the late TBJ could not complete the new town project comprising a university, primary and secondary schools, a shopping mall, hospital and helipad, which he started some time ago. It was once claimed that he spent about $20 million on education, healthcare, charitable activities on orphans, widows, elderly, physically challenged, the destitute, and others by providing permanent accommodation and regular square meals amongst others. It was also criticized by numerous mainstream churches as being heretical and deceitful for a strange way of administering healing and in fact it could be likened to that prophet who was not respected at home. In 2009, days after his victory in the country's presidential election, the late Ghanaian president John Arthur Mills flew to Nigeria for a thanksgiving service at school. Mr. Mills, while giving testimony, said TBJ was the only seer who had accurately predicted his victory at the polls. When I told them that our elections would be on December 7th and that there was a possibility that the results will be announced on the 8th, 9th, or 10th of December, he looked at me for some time smiled and said, I don't see it that way. I can see three different elections ahead of you and that... <laughs> a 
and that the results are going to be declared in January. I was asking myself, if there is a runoff, and the runoff is usually on the 28th of December, give ourselves two days for the electoral commissioner to come out with the results. Well, how possible that will run into January? Well, I kept these words at the back of my mind. We had the elections all right on December 7th. There was a runoff on December 28th. And then we had a third election in one constituency. And the results were announced in January. TBG ran rehabilitation programs for militants from Nigeria's volatile Niger Delta region, remorseful armed robbers, and sex workers. Another goodwill activity for humanity was during the earthquake that occurred in Haiti in 2010 when TBJ set up a field hospital called Clinic Emmanuel and sent a team of medical and humanitarian staff to the country. Moving in convoy with the United Nations. Many of the inhabitants living in makeshift tent communities as their houses have been either totally destroyed or are unsafe to live in. Get off my brother. Get off. He replayed the same humanitarian gesture at the instance of the earthquake disaster in Ewador in 2016. Occasionally, time can uh, come this way. Whatever come, we have to accept it. We went to give the food. We are running out of food now. We went to give help. We are running out of help. Sometimes our faith can be tested. It's not every time you give help, you will be helped. Additionally, he supported nations with very natural disasters, including the Philippines, India, and Ghana. TBJ was not left behind in the area of sports. He set up a football club named My People's Football Club. Two members of the team, Sunny Emmanuel and Ogenyo Nazi, played for Nigerian Golden Eaglets in the 2009 FIFA Under-17 World Cup. Three other players of the club were sponsored abroad to play professional football. TBJ was equally liked and disliked even by his colleague clergymen. He regularly hosted congregants from over 50 nations of the world. Most of these persecutions, unfortunately, were from his colleagues in evangelism administration. They accused him of not being genuine, saying his style of ministration is suspicious and fake. It is also on record that most of his critics constantly visited his church discreetly for spiritual assistance. Until his death, TBJ was rejected in the Christendom in Nigeria by the two Christian main bodies, namely the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, and the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN. The main reason being that TBJ was seen as an exorcist or a charmer. His main rivals in the top 10 clerics in Nigeria influenced this decision. It was even claimed that one of them, Pastor Enoch Adeboe, the general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG, said he would never go to Square to minister. To Adeboe, Joshua was never born again, and so he could not associate himself with him. When Pastor Ayo Orisajefo of World of Life Bible Church was the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria president and the Christian Association of Nigeria can chairman, he said 
the bodies were not convinced that TBJ was a child of God and would therefore not admit him to both bodies. He added that TBJ would also have to tell him when and how he got converted. Pastor Adeboye and the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, had since sent their messages of condolence addressed to Evelyn Joshua. Adeboye, in his letter dated 15 June 2021, reads, Calvary greetings in Jesus' name. We want to join millions of people across the globe to register our condolence with you on the passing of your husband, Pastor T.B. Joshua. We take solace in the Lord, believing that we shall meet again at the feet of the Lord Jesus on the resurrection morning. We therefore pray for you, your children and the entire church, that the Lord will uphold all of you, and such untimely death shall cease in our midst in Jesus' mighty name. Be assured of our continuous prayers. Yours in him, Pastor E. A. Adeboe. In the letter from the Khan president to the widow of T.B. Joshua, the president said, The news of the demise of your darling husband, Prophet Timitokwe Balogu Joshua, at the age of 57, came to us amidst great shock and sorrow. We commiserate with you, the children and the entire members of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, Squan, on this irreparable loss. Prophet T.B. Joshua was one of the foremost Nigerian charismatic pastors, televangelists, and philanthropists who devoted his entire lifetime to the propagation of the gospel and ministering to the needs of the Dantrod. He was renowned for his philosophical simplicity and humility. His death is not only a loss to the family and the church, but to Nigeria and the world at large. On behalf of all members of the Christian Association of Nigeria, can we commiserate with you and the entire family on this loss. It is our prayer that the Almighty God grants Prophet T.B. Joshua an eternal rest in his Creator, and may God's perpetual light continue to shine on his path. Unquote. Are these messages not too little, too late? Just thinking aloud. Dr. Femi Success, in his book titled Revealed, A Complete Revelation Without Humiliation, describes TB as elaborate, punchy, captivating, and total, the world's number one most talked about man of God, and the most vilified in many ways. He arouses keen interest among massive crowds, both Christian and non-Christian, unquote. He was said to have read the entire Bible many times over, on average of every two months, when he was very young. In 1995, the late prophet Dr. Akade Wale, the then shepherd of the Celestial Church of Christ, Upopo Ibala Parish, Ikola Road, Ipaja, Lagos, issued a press release stating that Jesus Christ confirmed to him that TBJ was his beloved servant. I quote, Our Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me from the altar in my office on a golden, very beautiful and mighty chair. He commanded me not to join fake, jealous and envious prophets to say blasphemy against a fellow messenger of God. Unquote. Dr. Adewale then quoted Jesus as saying, and I quote, The man in the synagogue is mine. He is your spiritual colleague. He is not fake. His power is not mixed. I do as I please. You are all working for my glory on earth. Never disown or desert him. Truly, he is young in age, but my spirit in him is pure and great. His grace is special. Many will fall through him, while others will rise through him also. Advise him always like a son, friend, and colleague, and do not judge him at all. Unquote. Let's delve a bit into the late prophet's 
Dr. Samuel Akadewole's pedigree. The late Dr. Adewole was in the creme de la creme of eminent ministers of God in Africa. He was renowned for accurate prophecies. He attended Yorkshire City University in the United Kingdom for his first degree and a master's degree in accountancy and in economics, respectively. He also had an honorary Doctor of Divinity degree from the Stanton University, Tampa, Florida, in the United States of America. Prophet Adewale was a chartered banker for many years before settling down to serve the Lord in a full-time capacity. He became a member of the Celestial Church of Christ in 1961. He was said to be the only Nigerian prophet who foresaw the death of late Pastor S.B.J. Oshofa, the founder and spiritual leader of the Celestial Church of Christ worldwide in 1985, and the death of the late Chief Obafemi Awolowo in 1987. In addition, he was the only prophet to predict August 28, 1993, as the day when former Nigerian military president, General Ibrahim Babangida, will quit office without fail. In 1995, Dr. Adewale prophesied that Squan will become a Jerusalem in Nigeria. TBJ described in his own words how God anointed him. And I, and I quote, I was in a trance for three consecutive days, and then I saw a hand that pointed a Bible to my heart, and the Bible immediately entered my heart. I heard a voice saying, I am your God. I am giving you divine commission to go and carry out the work of the Heavenly Father. I will show you the wonderful ways I will reveal myself through you in teaching, preaching, miracles, Signs and wonders for salvation of souls. The Bible that entered my heart symbolized spirit and life that is the Holy Spirit. Unquote. One of his usual mantras was, and I quote, the greatest way to use life is to spend it on something that would outlive it. Unquote. The ebullient TV evangelist carved a niche for himself in every area of life, especially benevolence. His compassion was second to none compared to others in the same profession. Some years ago, TBJ's impact on Nigeria's religious tourism was highlighted when he insinuated relocating his ministry to Israel. This was quickly met with opposition by some prominent people, especially in government, citing the economic benefits his ministry is providing. CBJ assisted the governments of many countries, including Nigeria, Ghana, and Colombia, through donations to projects involving the police and security. He also helped put an end to two years of power outage in some areas around his place of birth. TBJ single-handedly funded the building and running of a school in Lahore, Pakistan, named Emmanuel School. He repeated the same feat in a rural area in Ecuador after an earthquake disaster there in 2017. TBJ was recipient of numerous awards from various organizations worldwide, including the United Nations, the Arewa Youth Forum, predominantly Muslim organization and Zaka, Israel's primary rescue and recovery voluntary service. Prophet Joshua received the Officer of the Order of the Federal Republic, OFR, from the Nigerian government in 2008. He was amongst Africa's 15 most influential people by Pan-African magazines, the Africa Report, and New Africa magazine 
and voted the Yoruba Man of the Decade by Pan Yoruba Media Outlet Iroi Odwa. In 2011, Forbes reported that TBJ was Nigeria's third richest pastor. Mr. Kule Olowo Kweju, the executive chairman of Egbe Dimu Local Council Development Area, where Skwen is located, described TBJ as a complete definition of what humanity should be. T.B. Joshua contributed immensely to the transformation of African Pentecostalism into a transnational global movement with branches all over the world. The question people used to ask me, why not Advan? Why not Symbol? At least in front of the synagogue here. You're supposed to say be bored. So I will carry Bible. I say. You cannot find it anywhere because God has blessed me with free advice. His rise to prominence was in the late 1990s, coinciding with and enhanced by the televangelist explosion of miracle performed on live or recorded television programs. Jesus is the healer. Squall's TBJ is renowned for claiming to give visions and be able to heal all manners of ailments, including HIV, AIDS, and COVID-19. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. The movement Pentecostalism has miracle and healing at its heart. Its origin and growth especially in Africa, is largely driven by members' expectations and beliefs in the healing and transformative power of the Holy Spirit. Be it your business. TBJ and colleagues focused on these expectations. Numerous miracles, including economic prosperity and divine healing, were expected and received. This was indeed the main cause of the attraction for those in this movement, which included personalities and celebrities. Be it your finances. The late Zimbabwean opposition leader, Morgan Shangirai, South African opposition party leader, Julius Malema, actors including Nigeria's Jim Ike and international footballer Joseph Yobo were not left out. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. TBJ's contribution to the advancement of televangelism in Africa can never be overemphasized since its broadcast channel, Emmanuel TV, was founded in 2007. When asked by a journalist if he ever claimed to be Jesus Christ, his answer was, and I quote, I never claim to be Jesus Christ. I can never claim to be Jesus. There is no amount of power I will have that I will claim to be Jesus Christ. I am an ordinary servant. Even if I have power to create human beings, I can never claim to be Jesus Christ." Unquote. Not long ago, the round-faced TBJ with a goatee and a wardrobe full of bespoke warning town shirts appealed to the people to take the COVID-19 jab. TBJ's death has left a void that would be impossible to fill. His philanthropic tendency alone was second to none. Squan boasts of many foreigners amongst his workers and worshippers than any other church in Nigeria today. Thank goodness he had the foresight or spiritual vision to train numerous pastors. It is surprising to note that, unlike his peers, TBJ did not establish church branches on every nook and cranny. The church has only one branch located in Ghana as indicated on its website. He also kept his family in the background. His wife hardly appeared alongside him and none of his children were pastors 
or known to be heading branches. Many buildings located around Squan have long been transformed to hotels because of the predominantly foreigners who regularly visit the church. Also, residents of the area said business had been poor since the demise of the cleric. As of 2013, an estimated 2 million tourists are said to have visited Squan annually. These visitors have contributed to Nigeria's economy and an increase in flight frequencies and routes. The Nigerian Travel Week NTW event held in Lagos in 2018 revealed that TBJ Squan received the highest number of tourists in Nigeria. The event organizers also added that Squan received more weekly attendees than the combined number of visitors to Buckingham Palace and the Tower of London in the UK. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the guérisseur. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari and former President Gulot Jonathan have both sent their messages of condolence to the family. While the Lagos State Governor, Baba Jide Sanwolu, has visited the widow and family. His counterpart, the Odo State Governor, Oluwarutimi Akredolu, has condoled with the family too. And many dignitaries from all over the world are doing the same. The statement from Nigeria's head of state partly reads that the president commiserates with the family and members of the Synagogue Church of All Nations at Skoen on the passing of their father and founder, unquote. TBJ's widow, Evelyn, is 52, that is five years younger than her late husband. Evelyn confirmed his passing, tweeting, Losing a loved one is never easy. Whether sudden or foreseen, it's always heartbreaking. Um, quote. TBJ met his then wife to be, Evelyn, for the first time sometime in 1989, and proposed to her within an hour after they met. She was an employee of the Nigerian distilleries in Ota, Ogun State, and traveled to Egbe to visit her sister where she met TBJ in 1990. She had gone to meet him for counseling and spiritual guidance. By the end of about 45 minutes of setting eyes on each other on the same day, TBJ proposed to her. In her own words, we were just looking at each other until he, at a time, wrote my name on the piece of paper and so we started talking. He told me a lot of things about myself, both things that I knew and those that I never knew. I was shocked. He told me about my family, about my past, my present, and my future. Altogether, we spent about 45 minutes. Evelyn is seen by many as the second in command of Squern. Aside from preaching in the church, she also counsels believers. The website says that despite facing various challenges, he and Evelyn had a strong relationship. The couple wed in 1990. They had been married for 31 years until his death on June 5, 2021. TBJ and Evelyn are blessed with three female children. Sarah, the eldest of the three, is a law graduate from the London School of Economics, LSE, and she holds a PhD. Sarah was admitted to the bar in Nigeria as a legal practitioner in December 2015. TBJ could be described as the most persecuted prophet of God of our time. His lifestyle could be likened to the teachings of Jesus Christ 
as illustrated by his friendliness, warmth, and openness, as well as courtesy, humility, and big heartedness. The faith healer and neo Pentecostalist, who was incontestably one of Africa's most influential and controversial evangelists, could be described as the world's most enigmatic pastor of the 21st century, considering the records of miracles he was claimed to have performed and foretellings attributed to him. The immediate family of TVJ had concluded plans to make his final resting place the prayer mountain located on Ajishagiri Street at Godre Bay in a cartoon in the local council development area. The week-long burial ceremonies took place from 5 to 9 July 2021. TB Joshua has since been buried on July 9 in Lagos, Nigeria, as preferred by his widow, children, and the church authorities, contrary to the expectation of the monarch and the people of Arigidi Akoko, who desired that the late pastor be buried in his hometown. TBJ was Mr. Controversy, partially due to his involvement on sensitive sociopolitical and health issues, and also to his unorthodox ways of worship. In the book, The Mirror by TBJ, published in 2006, he writes, Whatever I am today is a product of the conviction that victory through Christ Jesus is victory indeed. The rest is history. My prayer is that Miss Kwan continue to blossom and live on. On behalf of all of us at LATV Productions, we say may TB Joshua's soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. We need your help. Were you at any time at the Synagogue Church of All Nations during the lifetime of Pastor T.B. Joshua? What was your vision there at the time? Were you a worker, observer, disciple, escort, carer, there to seek financial assistance or spiritual help? What was your first-hand experience of T.B. Joshua and his ministry? Would you like to share your experience with the world? Or are you happy with the inconsistent information you are getting on social media about TB Joshua after his death? Please help us to tell the world the truth. Let us hear from you. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth. We shall not show your face or make your voice obvious if you wish. Please call me on or text TBJ to the number on the screen. You may WhatsApp me on the same number. Alternatively, please email me at info at latv.co.uk. That is info at latv. .co.uk Your contribution may bring the truth to light. The Holy Quran says, and I quote, And do not mix the truth with falsehood or conceal the truth while you know it. Unquote. That is Surah 2, chapter 2, 42. While the Holy Bible supports this by and I quote, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Unquote. John chapter 8, verse 32. We await your call or message. Thank you. <laughs>